In many apps that use dynamic content, you'll want to restrict access to people who are logged in and possibly customize the view based on that user. For example, we could do a few things with this app. We could require people to register and log in before using it. We could keep separate lists of contacts for each user. We could integrate social media contacts as part of the list, and I'm sure we could come up with even more. Authentication is difficult. We've seen numerous big name websites in recent years get hacked and accidentally share access to the user database. It's an embarrassment and it puts your user's personal information from your website and possibly other websites at risk. Every web developer should think carefully before rolling their own authentication. It's not incredibly complicated to create your own authentication system, but it is incredibly complicated to do it well. If you're going to have your own authentication system, you should strongly consider using a module that has many users and developers looking at the code, evaluating the security, and constantly releasing updates. Another situation to consider is relying on third-party authentication providers, for example, social media sites like Twitter and Facebook. Fortunately, the module we'll be using in this section, Passport.js, can do all of the above. Passport is a middleware, code that runs before your routes and views, which deals with authentication for you. It supports more than 140 authentication strategies, including username and password, social media login, OAuth, and OpenID. It is a well-documented open source library with numerous developers that have been in constant development since 2011. We installed Passport along with our other dependent modules earlier, but there is another step that must be done before we can use it. We need to decide on an authentication strategy. If we search for Passport-related modules, we can see a lot that enable various kinds of authentication. Some allow logging in via external providers. Some allow hooking into a single sign-in provider. There's an LDAP login module and numerous other options. We're going to start out by using simple local authentication. That means users will register by picking a username and password and then entering it into your site to log in. We're going to use a couple modules to help us. First, we'll need to enable session support, which we'll discuss in more detail during the next video. We'll also install Passport-Local, which enables local database authentication, and Passport-Local-Mongoose, a module that will reduce the amount of code we need for Mongoose-based user profiles. You can add these modules to your package.json or you can npm install dash save them. In your app.js, you'll require express dash session and assign it to a variable called session. In older versions of express, this was built in, but in the recent versions, it has been separated into its own module so that it can be updated on a different schedule. After app.use cookie parser, add a line to initialize the session middleware. I'm passing in three strings, a secret which is used to help encrypt sessions, and should be kept private and unique for your app. Also, I'm explicitly setting values for resave, true, and save initialized, false. Resave true updates the session on each page view, even if it didn't change. This helps to avoid sessions expiring. Save initialized, false, means that sessions aren't stored for brand new sessions that are empty. They won't be stored until something is in them. This cuts down on database traffic for an anonymous user. The next step is to define our user profile model. This is a schema much like the contact schema. We call it account and put it in models, account JS. We are only going to define two fields, nickname and birth date. And really, we're only using these as an example for the schema. This app won't use either of those. Note that we don't need to specify a username field or a password. Our helper code does that for us. Now we need to require passport and passport-local back in app JS. After we define our middleware, we'll create a new section for Passport. We need to initialize the configuration and then enable session support. We also need to require our module that we recently created. Passport has a callback that needs to be defined and our Passport local mongoose function will create this for us from the account model. Lastly, for this part, we need to define serialize user and deserialize user functions. These functions store the user's logged in state in the database. Again, the work is mostly being done by our account model. We're going to define routes for logging in, registering, and logging out. We'll keep these in a file called auth.js. This file is not a lot different from our context.js route. We use router.route for the register URL, providing both get and post functions. You'll see that here on the post that we actually register the new account and then check for an error. Right now, we don't do much in the case that there's a problem, but you have a lot of flexibility in what you can do. If it worked, then we log the user in and then redirect to the contacts URL. Then we specify a router.get for forward slash login, which shows the form. 
I didn't use router.route here because I wanted to show that the .post method has two functions that are used. The first is the passport.authenticate function. Right now, we're sending in the least amount of parameters, but you can do a lot more, including redirect on failure. The second callback will only be called if the first one succeeds. If it succeeds, it means we successfully logged in and we simply get redirected to the contacts page. The last thing here is the logout function. We call rec.logout and then redirect to the home page. Back in app.js, we wire these routes up under the auth URL. That means we have auth login, auth register, and auth logout. We need to create two views and update our index view. The two we need to create are the login form and the register form. You'll see that the login form looks a lot like the form we used for adding contacts. It has only two fields, username and password, and it submits to auth login. The register form is exactly the same except for the labels. The index view is still pretty basic. We have an if statement that checks for the user. If it is there, we show the user's name and give them a logout link. If it's not present, which means the user is not logged in, we show two links, one to log in and the other to register. Note that as it stands now, users will never exist because we're not passing a user variable into our view. If we open routes index.js, we can fix that quickly. The user information is part of the rec variable, so we'll just add user colon rec.user to the context variables. At this point, we have enough to start testing, though we aren't done yet. If you start up MongoDB and then run npm start, hit your browser. You'll see the login and register links. Go ahead and register, then choose a name and password and submit. If it worked, which it should, you'll be redirected to the contacts page. Go back to the home page and you'll see your username listed and a logout link. Go ahead and hit logout, and then log in with the same username. Once again, you're redirected to the contacts page. Go ahead and log out once more. Now, don't log in and don't register. Just hit the link to the contacts page. You'll see it worked even though you're not logged in. We want to fix this, so let's go back to our routes contacts.js file. In this file, we need to create a custom middleware that gets called on all routes in this file. This is pretty easy. We simply create a router.use callback and don't define a URL pattern. We pass in rec, res, and next, like usual, and check if the user is logged in. If not, let's redirect back to the login page. If they are, then simply call next to ensure the next matching route is executed. Could it be that simple? Yes, it can. Save your changes and launch the app. Notice that you're logged out. This is because sessions don't survive a server restart. Click on the contacts link and you should get bounced over to the login form. Log in and now you can access the app. That's it for local authentication. The excellent passport module really makes this easy. Later, we'll use the same module to log in using social media. But first, we should talk about sessions, which we'll do in the next video.